Okay, and, uh, I do walking club, mm -hmm. the walking group on the Monday, and the Thursday is what's called the Men's Reach, the health group. Now we'd meet in Hamilton Road, Agenda, mm -hmm. each North Down and Orange, and what we do is we maybe have a talk with someone, mm -hmm. uh, just different things. Yeah. Occasionally we'd maybe go out somewhere. How did you get involved in all this? Somebody asked us, yeah, about, some and I said, yeah, shall I go down to the agenda and see what's on? Right. And asked a few questions, and they said, well, we've got a walking group. I said, that would be interesting, right. I'll come along. Yeah. So when I went along, but some of them have been walking for years and years and yeah. years, you know, yeah. they, they started it way years and mm -hmm. years ago. The walking group on the Monday is once a week. The men's reach is a, like a health type group. Mm -hmm. um, it's just for men to get together, yeah. and they meet every other Thursday. Mm -hmm. One time we went down to Dublin with the men's group. Of course, that was nearly an old day affair. By the time you get down there, you know, and yeah. uh, it was brilliant because a couple of guys knew their way around. And we went to a couple of the uh, museums. Yeah. There were two different ones. Mm -hmm. So we went to one one time and went round the museum. And then this, But some of the men had been there before, so it brought us around to a wee pub somewhere. And they sit in the chat. That's right now. Great, great crack. Because they have an awful lot to talk about. You uh -huh. know, they've lived a long time yeah. and they've been it's, through a war yeah. and, you know, they've had a job and uh -huh. all their reminiscences and all come out. You know, and they're, they're good crack together and they're brilliant. So That's then brilliant. after that, we went back and then got the tree in. And, and really, uh, for anybody who's maybe on their own, it's brilliant, I think, yeah. you know. Yeah. If you're at home on your own, uh -huh. that gets you out of yourself, yeah. you know. Why? But say I love people with a good positive attitude. After I left the Peru, I took early retirement uh -huh. and I was 55 and Esther says, I think she was thinking I'd be hanging around the house for her, sitting in the corner or something. I says, look, I'll get a job. Don't you worry, don't you worry. So anyway, uh, I went to the Volunteer Bureau, VSB, and uh, they were applying for, looking for a care worker. I says, okay, you know, applied. Uh -huh. And I was interviewed with this very domineering lady. He says, well, what could you offer? And I says, there's people here living on their own. And uh, a bit of company would do them no harm, you know. And I can talk, I can cook, you know, and uh, I've got the time. So she says, okay. And I started, and that was for a year. And it was as a care worker helping out. That's and then after that, I saw Bryson House. It's called Bryson or Bryson and Corporate or whatever now. And uh, they were advertising for care workers. And I said, Esther, I love this job. Because once you leave the front door, you're your own boss. Nobody's mm -hmm. telling you what to do. You know, you know what you're doing. So it was a scheme called Home from Hospital. And what was happening was they were brought in beds. People couldn't get out of hospital because there was nobody at home to look after them. Because their family had moved away and they were mm -hmm. on their own. They'd maybe had a fall. Mm -hmm. or got over an operation or whatever. There was a young fella up in Kilcooley who had uh, mm -hmm. come off a motorbike, broke his leg, and of course he was hobbling about the flat, couldn't look after himself. So anyway, the job was to look after them in the meantime, give them a maximum of six weeks. We were put in for two weeks, mm -hmm. but it could be extended depending on what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was that uh, the hospital wouldn't let them out unless there was somebody to look after them, so the scheme was thought up to mm -hmm. free beds. Mm -hmm. So I would go in and you could collect their pension, make them a meal, talk to them uh, if they need a bit of help about the house, mm -hmm. a bit of shopping, whatever they need in the short term to get them back on their feet so that they felt independent and uh, could make progress. Mm -hmm. So I thought this is brilliant, this is a brilliant job. So I was there 10 years, Did you have 10 years? working for Bryson House. That's brilliant. And the, the, the girl who was in charge, she was retiring and uh, I think somebody had died and some other things happened in her life and uh, I saw a letter that she'd sent, now I was supposed to see it, uh -huh. but she'd said, don't ask George to retire. Uh -huh. Now at this time I was sort of 65, 66, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so I, I worked on for another year and then that was the 10 years I thought, well it's time uh -huh. to go, because I was working with a fellow up in Bagger here around uh, Killeen. And I went to see him, you see, and I said, home from hospital. And normally they would introduce you, send along with maybe a social worker or something. Uh -huh. He says, I, I don't want anybody, he says. Uh, so anyway, uh, okay, he agreed to have me for a couple of weeks. So I heard him talking to his daughter, and he says, he was on the phone, he says, 
Well, Sheldon. A man will look after me. He says he's older than I am. 